anything else is noise. I, I, I want to focus on what I'm doing. And, and like I said, I ended up screwing it up. Uh, but fortunately, my guys carried me. Um, but but it's one of those that, that, you know, then if it's the two of us in the you know, battle of the century is we're each fighting our own battles. <laughs> you know, you and I can be yelling at each other. Yeah, well, there's, we should probably get on voice and talk anyway, because there's some strategy involved. Uh, like you were saying before, hey, did you, you know, you did it a couple of times. I actually did it a lot more than a couple of times. I spent like two or three hours going, doing it every time, going back and redoing it and redoing it and trying to look at the strategy. And there's actually some really good strategy uh, when you're an immortal. The, those swords provide a lot of good, uh, they provide actually good blocking. So if you cut off the, the, the field in half with the swords, because you can pop two and it gives you like another second or two, you can pop a third one down. You can cut half the half the the field and then if you go and stun it stuns this side and the other and then that's when you can do the whirlwind and take everybody out without them being able to hit you i was just messing around with the uh, with the people that were coming at me i think i finished 78 percent of health or something i don't know i gotta look at that 78 or 68 percent of the health and like yeah something like 78 kills so it couldn't take me down but let's let's talk so we can uh, turn up the heat on both of our plans I'll tell you my okay, I, have a, I have a question, guys, for the uh, voice chats. Is it possible sure. to get three for each clan, one for the main, and essentially two for the sub, so that the guys, like everyone, knows where to go before the wars? Yeah, yeah, that's a because what ended up happening was everyone just jumped into one, and our, we were clan two, but we were in voice chat three, and everyone was just trying to figure it out and. I'm just wondering if it's just a little bit more organized. Yeah, I was actually talking to, um, I was talking to one of the officers and uh, uh, maybe him and AES or some of the council members if they have time can uh, work it. But the high level, what I wanted to do is create some events. So I would just literally we would create the events for the Shadow War and uh, they would be put into a specific channel, like you said. So people would know where to go and there would be a tag like, hey, this is NA East, blah, 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 scrap mischief, like yada, yada, whatever, map, you know, main battle. So we're working on that. Plus high level, we're also working on trying to get a bot set up that will be able to do it automatically. So it's coming. But yeah, this awesome. one was a little chaotic. I agree. This one's kind of nuts. It's okay. We figured it out. Yeah, it was also the first one. We, I mean, no one, no one really even knew what to expect going into it. I mean, you know, from all the readings that, that I did, and you know, up until we saw the first recording, you know, um, I kind of figured it was going to be the main battle was against the immortal. That made sense, you know. And then it was like the support battles. Is that also against an immortal? Is that doing something like battlefield? I thought it was going to be similar to battlefield for a little while, you know. And if you took out you know, the, the ancient's heart, you know, that, that you gave a buff, which, I mean, one of those kind of made sense, but it didn't really, you know, and, and that was almost one of the unfortunate things that, you know, and exciting things. No one knew what to expect until um, Oceana got the event. Yep. Just like it was in alphas and the betas when we got some of the stuff, um, when we first got into the game, they didn't really tell us, like, the first people that got in, like, I was one of the first people actually in in the alpha test, right? With with some of the other content creators, like the whole cycle of strife. We had no idea when it turns, what the hell happened. The same exact thing. We were like, we, were, we walked up to the cycle. We're like, oh, you just you get in here, and then I guess there's a timer. Huh? Makes sense. That's kind of where we figured it out. So it's good. That a lot of people are figuring it out the same way. I think it's exciting. Like it lets you. I, don't know, I think it, it, you know, it makes you makes you feel like you're kind of special, you know, that no one else knows yet. I like it. That was fun. I was late to the party, Red. But what what is the the second and first support battles? Are they PvP or also PVE? It's exactly the same. Um, all three battles are up to thirty people versus an immortal. Um, you know, the the main battle is is versus the other leader. And then the uh, support battles are against, you know, a, a, a bot, a, you know, an AI type, mm. you know, or a raid boss. Um, so, I mean, that, that's actually what it was, you know, which again, it, 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 it makes sense, you know, that way everyone can, can certainly participate, you know. Um, and then the other side was also as 
and then Echo had in his video, you know, the event starts at the hour, you know, for preparation, but the battle itself, you know, doesn't begin until 20 minutes after the appointed hour. Um, so all that time up until then, you know, clan members can jump in and out of the battlefield to, to organize, you know, power ratings and, and get the right people in there. Gotcha. I wasn't sure if it was essentially a giant PvP match, like a big team battle. And they did something where if one team's kills were bigger than the other team's kills and that team was leading. Yeah, no, not in this case, you know, and, and yeah. Nemo actually said that, that was some of the things people wondered is, is it a PvP event or is it a PvE, you know, raid boss? Um, you know, so and it's also kind of... How do, the, how do the buffs work then? Because they were changing as we were going. Is it just if you defeat the raid boss first, then you get the buff? Or is it changing as you're at, like live as you're going? The way I understood it, um, th when the support battles, when they, uh, d when the raid boss was killed in the support battles, the main battle got a buff, you know, uh, of whatever it was, five or ten percent. And, and I, I know I'd heard, you know, Nemo, um, maybe you caught it a little bit better because uh, I know you've got that kind of memory too. Um, I I heard five and ten, and then that I thought it combines to make up to a fifteen percent buff. Was that true, or is it just five and ten, and I made up the fifteen? No, it does. It actually keeps combining, and it keeps going. For us, eventually, uh, it went up to like thirty, I think. So every every time they they win, or every time something happens, there is a five percent buff. It just keeps going up. That being said. Um, to touch on the thing that you were talking about by splitting the map as the raid boss, um, to prevent this from happening to us, we should really try to stack our main not only with people that are high points, but actually ranged and high single target DPS. And then your more PvP based people in your supports, because you're actually going to be able to PvP with the other people properly. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Actually, um, really smart. The the one as a um, as a raid boss, right? One of the things that I, if, if you see my video, you'll notice that a lot of the times I keep moving around. I keep making sure that I go around the outside and get those ranged guys because that's what they were trying to do to me, right? A lot of the wizards and high end would sit on the sides there and just blast me with the range while the middle kept me busy. So um, I had to keep that moving and doing that exact thing by blocking it off with my uh, with my sword. So yeah, Mark. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and you know, like Nemo said, you know, the, the, I kept throwing news, you know, to my guys was like, make certain that you, you keep your distance because that stun lock is business, you know, uh, the, the, if when you're in the battle or if the wall goes up, you know, from the, the swords, like it's almost impossible to get through under most circumstances or get around, you know, um, and, and you definitely need to, to plan around that. Um, I was actually looking at you know, one of my guys left me a DM last night and he said he was checking out, um, you know, some of the other battles and he goes, you know, we can made the comment to me that we can definitely out DPS people, but sometimes just having bodies in there, you know, is enough to add to the confusion too. Like, you know, just having, um, you know, the people on the floor to spread out, you know, even if you've got, you know, a, you know, level, um, you know, 51 who's just at the bottom and he's just there, you know, throwing lightning bolts or whatever, you know, like it, that's just enough to, to make everyone's life a little bit, you know, more challenging. Um, and, and I would kind of imagine that when they talk about, um, you know, the, the end battle, you know, you don't necessarily get uh, the raid boss to zero health. There's a timer on there, you know, and they'll, they'll consider that too of like, well, how much, you know, damage was dealt. Um, you know, everyone just needs to be there and active and moving around, you know, using those rate, the ranged attacks, definitely. Um, you know, and then the other one that I know was frustrating in the, in the practice, but it, you know, obviously you could do a little bit better in the, um, uh, actual battle was healing uh, in the practice rounds. You know, like I said, you it, you had one attempt, and as soon as you were dead, you were dead. Uh, but you never could never really heal up. Where obviously now, um, when you're in the actual um, 
competition, it's a little bit different. Um, but it's also a lot more chaotic with 30 people. And the, um, the other one I noticed, that, and I didn't really get a good understanding of, what was the deal with those, um, what was it, the statues that are around the pit, you know, that, that came to life every 90 seconds or something? You're talking about the Guardians? Yeah, there were, there were, you know, to the back of the Immortal. Yes, so if you picked up, I'm not sure which ones of those, so I was trying to figure that one out as I was playing. But if you pick up enough of, so when you kill them, they drop certain things and then you have things that I forgot what it's called, but they drop as well. Two of the different ones gave you, I think, ability for specials. One of the specials, I believe, is you being able to call the guardians to help. So it's just like uh, basically ads, the, the NPC ads that are helping you. Mm -hmm. Because like somewhere in there, I think it says a warden or uh, immortal spawned wardens or something like that. I, I have it in the video. If you watch the video, you'll see like at some point I hit the button and they spawn. <laughs> you know, it's one of those depending. It kind of goes back to the um, idea of just having some of that communication or, you know, forethought with, you know, the rest of your team. Like, hey, if you see the this statues go active, like level them because that's, you know, going to give you some sort of boost, you know, in some way, shape and form. Um, so it's one of those. I think that that'll, that'd be an interesting thing to really see, um, see the, the, the winning teams take advantage of, you know, because obviously that can make a difference in the meta, you know, um, being able to time, we'll say a warden swap, swoop or, you know, guardians drop in or something, um, you know, knowing when to use that and how to how to get it, how to have your guys get it for you. I believe that the purpose is not so much to deal damage, it's just to stop people from healing. Because they're on the outskirts, so if you can maintain the lower part of the map, those things will be hitting anybody in the upper. Yeah. I know that's true with the uh, you know the battlegrounds. <laughs> One of those things that, that takes a while to get used to that you know when you're in the middle of heat. Uh, when you start taking damage, you can't just pop a heal bottle. You have to escape to a quiet area uh, to bandage up. Um, you know, so I could definitely see that being, you know, being the case there. Um, and I'd be interested to get more information on it. Uh, don't forget other people. And I know um, the script I almost can't, I think it's Lugafist. Uh, I'll get to you in a second. But if anyone's got any, you know, kind of general questions, again, we've got the, the campfire chat um, located off in the left-hand panel. You guys can certainly drop in questions in there uh, if you have anything to kind of add in or, or questions to ask. Um, you know, it's one of especially with this, it would be great. You know, this is obviously a PVE uh, event. You know, I, I know we thought about, you know, whether it was guild versus guild, an actual PVP battle. Um, you never know. We certainly, you know, we certainly could see something, um, you know, with that as far as another round or another version. Uh, you never know. Um, well, I get you on, Lugafist. Uh, our dog asked the question, um, and this is certainly legit legitimate for people. Uh, after the Shadow Wars um, you know, are all over, or this round is all over, to the best of our knowledge, what's next? What does this mean? Why do we do this? You know, how, how does this kind of uh, play into the big picture? It sound right, boy. So the Shadow War. The entire Shadow War mechanic was basically brought into place from us complaining about not having um, a right way to decide who goes into the Rite of Exile. The Rite of Exile is what decides whether, you know, who becomes the Immortal, right? So in order to initiate the Rite of Exile and get into all of that, you know, before it was just basically like blah, whoever has more points, whoever has more people, whoever's bigger, that's who just goes in and becomes number one versus whatever. So like your rank almost, you know, the higher rank clans basically ended up being the number ones and automatically became the immortals. So this is a big complaint to a lot of people, including myself. I made like four different videos about it, how I really didn't like this. It sounds like they listened. Okay. Or I mean, I'm sure other people made a video about it as well. Um, and just complained about it in general. This wasn't fair. So what this is, is a fair way of trying to make sure that you earn your way into the top 10 dark plans. Because that's what the system is deciding high level 
who's going to be in the top, top 10 dark clans because those the top 10 clans are the only ones that are able to participate in the right of exile so the people that win are going up into the right and then are have an ability to possibly become the immortal clan by winning the right of exile that's what this is Yeah, it was a way to to kind of rank it out, and I gotta say, I actually like it better. Um, you know, because there are some things that um, I think were kind of a failed in the beta system, where you know, your like you said, your top shadow clans were just the ones that you know sat there and did raid the vault all day, just spammed it to to get up their shadow you know levels, or you know, did their contracts all day. You know, and some people don't want to do that. Like, you know, it's fun, but I don't want to do it all day, every day. You know, and this is a great way to, um, you know, encourage the actual um, test. Because don't forget, you know, as shadows, you know, we were supposed to, you know, work together, but also work against each other to unseat the immortals, you know. And, and you know, other than just doing shadow activities, there's no way to really rank yourselves you know, in a meaningful way. Uh, and, and this is definitely something, a nice way to do it, um, you know, to, to show who the best are, you know, in the, in the faction. Agreed. So I'm responding to someone that's asked the campfire or wanted to know about the campfire. What is it in a different channel? Obviously, that was something kind of different. Um, the other thing I want to kind of talk about was just kind of, and, and I'm not seeing any questions, if anyone had any like kind of thoughts or stumbling blocks or like I said, what ifs as far as um, events, because I know, you know, s some things are very clear on how they, you know, open up and then some things are much less clear. Uh, you know, we talked about um, amongst ourselves anyway, about, you know, starting shadow clans, you know, how does that work? You know, as far as, you know, joining into a shadow clan you know you've got to be in the shadow which means you have to be 43 which also means you have to be so far in the quest that some people didn't know like how to enter the lotto how to get the signets um is that the only way you know so, some people you know think winning the lottery was the only way to get into the shadows which it's not really um you know as far as getting akiva's signet there's you know two ways one is get it from the lotto after level 41. The other one is asking a nice shadow. Oftentimes, you know, many shadows have, unless they give it away, they might have multiple um, Akiba signets uh, to give away. So, you know, those are things that you could definitely just voice up. How do I get in? Um, you know, dark clans, some of them may even have spares, at least initially. Um, I know I don't have any spares in, in my dark clan. We've given all of ours away, but many of my um, clan clans members have you know multiples, uh, so it's definitely you know voice voice up whether it's in Discord or in game chat if anyone's looking for them. Um, the other one that I know kind of got me a little bit was, and I remember this happening in beta too. The heli uh, not the heliquary, that, the, although that could, did get somebody the um, uh, Ophid's sanctum. Um, you know, being able to unlock that because I know you know there's a it wasn't horribly clear like this is how you go and in, get into the sanctum you know some of us knew about it but you didn't understand that because it wasn't really spelled out you had to get challenge rifts done uh, specifically for um, for the Harad requests you know, you had to get up to challenge rift 10. Um, you know, so it's one of those, you know, some people, if you're, you know, knocking out challenge rifts, you never knew that that was a, a border uh, or a block. Um, but for other people, you know, at least for me, I, I remember looking at it like, why am I not getting, I should be getting the Herodric quest line open. You know, why am I not? And, and, and you know, then I just happened to stumble across the right level of uh, the challenge rift, you know, and that was, just one of those you know things that were just a little less clear um so again you know what are some of the questions that you know you guys have or you know up on the uh stage i know you know we just got peeps just came up or Ludafist, if you guys have any questions or comments about you know some things that we've been doing uh, or you know it's not horribly clear in the game <laughs> 